right, it says it's having trouble connecting here. Oh, uh, there we go. Stand by. <clears throat> What's happening, everybody? This is Syracuse football post game presented by Kraus Health. Brent Axe in Syracuse, New York. Emily Liker. She exited the light, entered the night of Blacksburg, Virginia. At least you got to see that, Emily. Okay. Yeah. You got to see one of the coolest entrances in all of sports. So you got mm -hmm. that going for you, which is nice. What we didn't see tonight was a competitive football game from Syracuse football. For the fourth straight game, Syracuse no shows on national television. They lose this one to Virginia Tech 38-10. to They've been outscored in the last four games, 150-34. to And it is one thing to lose to a national powerhouse in Clemson. It is another to lose back-to-back -back games on the road to top 20 teams currently in North Carolina, who just actually lost to Virginia, of course, and in Florida State, who is one of the best teams in the country and is on the short list of teams that you know, could be in the national championship game, could be certainly in the college football Final Four. It is quite another to go to Blacksburg after a bye week, and Virginia Tech had a bye week itself, and get blown out and not look ready to play and commit a lot of penalties in key spots and – a lot of things that we're going to go over in this post game show, which Emily, based on the feedback that you and I got, and look, you can't always live in a world of social media, but it is an immediate place for people to express what they're feeling and seeing. I think a lot of people have had it. I think okay. this is the game for a lot of people that you know, maybe if you were maybe hanging on to the thought that Dino Babers could lead Syracuse forward this might have been the breaking point. And I think what we have seen tonight is the beginning of the end, potentially, of the Dino Babers era. It should be. I question if it will be, just based on how Syracuse University runs things, what they'll do if they finish 7-5, and five, maybe even 6-6 six and six with a bowl game. You're coming into a situation where you're going to play a Friday night game against Boston College at home. You're going to have a lot of upset fans there you're gonna have a lot of upset fans through the week this is just emily there's no other way to put it this has been embarrassing for syracuse four straight games on either espn or abc and that boston college game is a friday night matchup on boston college and i just don't know how john wildhack can look anybody in the eye and be serious about saying that this is an ascendant football brand that this is a brand on the rise, that this is anything but a program, as you noted, in free fall. So we'll mix up the conversation about tonight and long term, because I think it's on people's mind. In the short term, Emily, you just came from post game. What was said in, in the post game press conference? I would imagine it wasn't much at this point, but what did Dino Babers have to say? As uh, you have some friends there in, in the press box that are. Uh, Cleaning up, uh, apparently. This, it, 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 this is live, folks. This is what happens. Emily is going to duck out and find another spot to do the post game show. She's uh, up in the Virginia Tech press box uh, doing the show here. So while Emily finds another spot where people are not uh, doing their, their late night cleanup here, look, sir, you know, and I'll highlight your comments as we go here. And uh, some of you are joining us live. If you are, uh, listening in the future. Remember, this is also on podcast, on Spotify, on Apple, on a number of places. You know, if you're listening on Friday and you slept it off and you don't feel any better, if you're with us live here, I think, you know, this comment fits what a lot of people are feeling right now. Jack says, Brent, I wouldn't want to go down that rabbit hole again. William says they can't compete physically on both the defense and the offensive line. Uh, thank you, Brian, saying that this is more entertaining uh, than the game was itself at this point. Uh, Doug jumping in to say, how many wins has Dino averaged a year since he's been here? I believe it's only four, right? So as we highlight some of these comments, and we have Emily back, who had to move around a little bit in the Virginia Tech uh, press box up there. It, it, it happens, you know? It happens. It's live, baby. It happens. This is what happens. <laughs> so uh, before we were uh, rudely interrupted by people you know, doing their jobs, how dare they? Uh, what was said in the post-game press conference? Yeah, so we got to talk to, to Dino, obviously, and then uh, Marlo Wax, Garrett Schrader, and Dan Villari. And 
something I found very interesting was that it essentially felt like Babers and Garrett Schrader had each chosen like a mantra to come into the press conference with and just kind of kept on like repeating the same phrase. Each of them for, for Dino, it was like this idea that everything is going to be looked at, like ev like changes, anything can change at this point. Like everything is being considered to be changed. Um, he wouldn't really go much more in depth on like whether that's personnel on the field or coaches or any of that um and then for G Garrett it was this idea that there's a lot of football left to play which I hate to break it to Garrett there really isn't there's four, four games, games left, left in yeah. four games left in the regular season the best and I think this is probably the most damning thing and, and goes to the part about um how can you call Syracuse an ascendant brand is Syracuse cannot finish above 0.500 in conference play this year because there's only four games left this season and they're now 0-4 in conference. They cannot finish better than 4-4 four four in conference. Which, Emily, Dino has only finished above 500 in ACC play once. He is 4-4 four and four once, which was last year. So mm -hmm. that would be once over 500 in eight years. It would be twice at 500, and that would be if they finished the year with four yeah. wins to finish four and four. So by all likelihood, you're going to have a coach that's now finished once above 500 in ACC play in eight years. Uh, good news to come out of this game. We should note uh, Jaden Bellamy, who was taken to the hospital, uh, it turned out it was just precautionary. They wanted to get some mm -hmm. x-rays. Dino wouldn't uh, specify, of course, because that's what coaches do, what the <laughs> yeah. injury was. I don't even think we got an upper or a lower body injury no. uh, out of that. Right, Emily? No, yeah, Dino, yeah. So Dino opened the press conference with that. That was like his his initial kind of ramble. Um, and then I asked, I was like, "Well, was it like a head neck injury? Was it his upper or lower body?" And he was like, "Well, I don't want to say that because he could be eligible to play next week." Which, I mean, you go to the hospital, like that's kind of a big deal. So I'm kind yeah. of one, I, that's why I would kind of like to know more of what was going on with him because how could he have been in such dire circumstances? I guess not dire, but how could the circumstance have been that they needed to take him mid game to the hospital and now well, he's like possibly going to play next game? And on the ESPN broadcast, Emily, they noted that they had to take him to the hospital and that they took his parents out of the stands, Jaden Bell and yeah. his parents. So you're like, well, hold on, what's happening here? Right. And mm -hmm. we didn't get much information after that. Syracuse wouldn't tell ESPN or us. I know we checked in the yeah, press box what was happening. Emily did check on it. So, that, you know, you're, you're leaving everybody kind of hanging in the wind here. So, mm -hmm. thankfully, that was not a serious situation. He did fly home with the team. Okay. The, the, you bro Some commenters here, and we talked about Schrader, and this is the fourth straight game now where the Syracuse offense, I mean, we're talking about 138 total yards. They did not have a single rushing yard in this football game against the 103rd rushing defense in the country. Your running quarterback couldn't run. LaQuinn Allen could not run. Syracuse had one tangible offensive drive in this football game. One. They start off with a uh, intentional grounding in a hole that knocks them back to third and 28. Right? Three of their first four offensive plays resulted in a penalty they start the second half they have a a positive play with Damian Alford gets an intermediate pass how about that which we have not seen from this offense that comes back as Enrique Cruz is up the field as an ineligible receiver Schrader got a safety following that right he was sacked eight times you know tell you one about the lack of time that he had in the offensive line this offense, Emily, I, you and I were talking after Florida State about how they just couldn't function. Like, what do we call this? This offense yeah. against Virginia Tech now. Mm -hmm. Virginia Tech. That's not Florida State out there. That's not North Carolina out there. That's not even Clemson out there. Against Virginia Tech literally cannot function right now. So when you say Dino puts everything on the table, you've got to put everything on the table. That includes a quarterback change. That includes, like, anything you can think of here to try and revive this offense because it simply cannot function. And here we are again watching an offense, Emily. We saw it a couple times with Valari, a couple times on one drive with Alford, but they can't even complete consistently intermediate 5- to 10-yard passes. The offense yeah. literally cannot move. It's, mm -hmm. it's sad is what it is. It's sad to watch. Yeah, you know, like... 
Gary owned up to it post game or, or some of it. Like he was like, you know what? Like a lot of the mistakes that have been made have been my mistakes. Um, he's a veteran quarterback though. Like it, like he can own up to it, but that doesn't make it any better. Like that doesn't make people want to forgive him for it. Um, I think the, the most damning thing for him today is that heading into this week on Tuesday, which I know you weren't there, Brent, he had said something about how like Syracuse's explosive plays come when he is running the ball and like mm -hmm. stepping up and being aggressive in space. Um, he had negative 42 rushing yards. Oh. LaQuint had 42 rushing yards. They matched each other exactly, but Garrett's canceled his out, which is just ridiculous. And yes, like, yes, there are like things that go into that. Like the offensive Sacks, line is bad. You know. Sacks are bad. And like that, like, that all contributes to that. But also, like, we, we've been saying this every week. It just feels like something with his decision-making has been off. And I don't know. No one will really say if that's, like, him. No one has said yet. I will say no one has said yet mm -hmm. if that is a result of the play calling, which I tried to get at today in the press conference. Uh, no one has said if that is just – Garrett and like heroics and wanting to hold on to the ball in a in an RPO situation. Um, but but negative 42 rushing yards from the guy who had what, like 200 close to 200 against Purdue earlier this year, which Virginia Tech lost to Purdue. And granted, this Virginia Tech team has done a lot better in the past few weeks than they did against Purdue. And that Purdue game was crazy for them because it was in a rain delay for six hours. But like. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I know we're, we're living in a world of speculation here, but something is just off with Schrader. And we were th they're coming off a bye week. Remember before the Florida State game, they claimed it was food poisoning. And it kind of reminds me as a Buffalo Bills fan who did win tonight, so at least something good happened in, in the, the New York State football world. But it reminded me of Josh Allen and what's been happening the last couple of weeks with Josh Allen. Always oh, not himself. They're not letting him run. They're not letting him be Josh Allen. I don't even know how you can let Garrett Trader be Garrett Trader at this point because the timing's off on the throws, the calls aren't there, they clearly don't have the confidence to run this offense. I have sat here on a number of post-game shows and in other places, Emily, and said they have the receivers to do it. Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't. You know, I mean, they're going out, they're improving that game by game. I mean, Damian Alford is not a number one receiver. They consistently make these sideline throws that don't work. I love the heart that Dan Villari shows out there at the tight end position. There are some positives here, but you just don't hear Omari Hatcher's name, who took a big shot to the helmet and and is okay, thankfully, from this yeah. game. You don't hear Isaiah Jones' name. He was out there. I don't. Did yeah. he even have a catch? No, he you did not have a catch. You don't hear Donovan Brown's name. Like you just let me go while, while we're talking about it here. A total of five different receivers caught the ball. Alford with four, Valari with four, Allen, the running back, who's the lead and receiver on the team coming in, Hatcher and Brown each had a, a catch apiece. That's just, it's just not enough. Mm -hmm. And Emily, so Virginia Tech's coming off a bye. What do they do early in the game? Trick plays, taking shots, aggressive. Syracuse, they're still in the bye week, it looked like, for, for most of this game, to be honest with you. I mean, they came out and three of their first five plays, I believe, had penalties on them. You had the Garrett getting sacked and going and throwing the ball and it being intentional grounding. And then you had, I believe it was a false start. It was either a false start or a holding. Let me double check. Mm -hmm. um, and that then pretty much like ended that drive. Yeah, intentional grounding, then the holding. They go for something on third down, don't get it. They punt. The next drive they come out and they start with a false start again on the next drive. This is out of a bye week. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. I think people are fed up. And I think, and again, I'm combining, you know, micro with macro here. This is as good of a litmus test as you're going to get playing three good programs in Clemson, Florida State, and North Carolina. But you got to win games on the road in the ACC in, in tough environments. It's just, it feels like there's so many things that you, you put it in the headline of your story that feel like they're in free fall right now mm -hmm. so there's not momentum there there's not anything that could re even remotely say that this is an ascendant football brand both in the here and now and in the long term here so look this is the kind of loss emily 
that in a lot of other Power 5 programs would get a coach fired. I mean, just yes. to be blunt and frank about it, I don't think John Wildhack's going to do that now, but he's certainly on the clock to do it at some point. It's a question of what he's going to do about this and what the standard is. And for those that say, and I talked about it with David Hale on my podcast last week, you know, is it Dino or is it the program, right? There's a lot of things that are institutional about Syracuse you're not going to change. What I know you can change and is the easiest to change is the coach, and the coach doesn't appear to have this thing heading towards being the ascendant brand that its athletic director claims that it is in year eight. With four games to go, you know, even if you pull out a miracle and win four straight games, I just don't see how they do that at this point, the way they're playing. Like, I think a lot of people are fed up and are going to be calling for a change over the next four weeks here. If they weren't already, I think a lot of people flip to that side after what they saw tonight. Yeah, and I think, I think too, like, adding to the frustration is this, just that there, like, seems to be a complete lack of answers and in some ways accountability for what's going on it's always I mean coming off of of UNC and Florida State it was oh these defenses are really good we weren't going to play well against these defenses that tune changed earlier this week and Dino finally said no we weren't playing well um after this game he was like you know what I'd kind of like to go back and look at the film which you know I, I give coaches some grace room on that like I definitely don't catch anything in everything in game I would not expect them to catch everything in game so like I can understand that but still you should have some some sense of what's going on and you should speak up about it like you know what like you can't I know they have this this I this La Familia the Ohana type thing and like I, I think that's respectable and like you have to build a, a culture but also like you got it. Dino, and Dino said this tonight. I wish I had pulled the full quote before we got on here, but something about like, you need to tell people the truth and it does not feel. Well, they're not doing that. It, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Outwardly, it does not, not feel like that. anyone is getting the truth. It doesn't feel well, like we're getting the truth all the time. No. Like, And maybe you won't get it in an immediate after the game, post game press conference. Maybe that yeah. comes Monday, yeah. right? Dino's been pretty blunt about certain things as of late, but Emily, you touched on it there a minute ago. How about Dino with the quote after the Florida State game that the offense would get right back to where it was because of the teams that they were playing, because of the defenses mm -hmm. that they were playing? Well, guess what? That didn't show up tonight. You looked either as bad or worse than some of the games we saw in the past four weeks. This We mentioned the rushing yards, and that got count. You, you mentioned Allen had 42 yards. Schrader had minus 42, which I can't even believe we're saying that. So that mm -hmm. balances it out. But you still had zero rushing yards in the box score. You've scored two touchdowns in the last three games. We mentioned the penalty issues. This was almost the 14th time that Syracuse has lost a game by 30 or more points under Babers. They lost 38 to 10. So, you know, semantics. They came close to yeah. it. This is, and again, you don't want to say it's over because there's four games left here, but I don't see the answers to this. And you don't have a coach that's coming up there. This is not Dino's style, but so many people have commented, Emily, about like you go every time they show Dino on camera, it's it doesn't look like he's coaching a football game. It looks like he's at an art studio, like admiring a Picasso, right? Like they want to see fire. Mm -hmm. They want to see a coach that and the sideline reporter for ESPN said a very fired up Dino Babers coming out of halftime. That was not an on camera interview. So I mean Dino right. can get passionate at times. It's not like yeah. he's like that all the time, yeah. but People notice this stuff, right? So, look, with four games to go here, you've got a, a first-year offensive coordinator in Jason Beck who's really struggling to get anything going with this offense right now. You know, Rocky Long is, is credited as one of the more respected coaches in the country. I've heard so much about these great adjustments that he makes, but, you know, look at the numbers that they've given up offensively in the last four games. Marlo Wax had a great game tonight. I'll give him that. Mm -hmm. He had, what, 14 tackles, I believe. Yeah, I think so. But, the, Emily, there are more questions than answers for this program right now, and I feel like if they can't solve this and solve it quickly, it's going to lead to a change. And that might be – I'm going to put an in-season change on the table right now. I think if it continues at this rate, you don't have a choice if you're John Wildhack. I think that would be – his preference not to do that, but if you're going to be an ascendant big boy power five ACC football program, you're going to get to that point at some point, and it's, it's going to be sooner rather than later. Well, it's tough, right? Because you're 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 like barreling towards 
like the the last game of the season they play at home if they lose out up until that wake forest game who wants to come to that game who wants to come students are out of town for that right students thanksgiving will be out of town weekend. And thanksgiving yeah. people are gonna have plans like that has the potential to be a very very low attended game if things keep going the way they do and which by the way so does friday's game against boston college like yeah it's parents weekend so you might get a little push from that at syracuse but what's the motivate they were having attendance problems earlier in the season emily they haven't been home for a month they didn't have a home game in the entire month of october they gave away one against pittsburgh which might be a blessing in disguise if this continues at this rate syracuse fans are fickle as it is going to games Who's going to be going to this game on Friday against yeah. next Friday against Boston College at, at the rate we're going here? Well, and you know, Boston College, like, barring UConn, which is a a very losing team this season, upsetting them on their home turf this weekend, Boston College will be one win away from a bowl game when they come to visit Syracuse. They are on a three game winning streak entering this weekend. They have UConn at home this weekend, which is likely another win for them. And they'll be on the edge of a bowl berth, which is more of a big deal for them than it is for Syracuse. And it is a big deal for Syracuse, too. And so, like, sure, the Dome is an advantage, but momentum, I think, is a bigger advantage this far in the season. Well, and Emily, if they come out on Friday and they have another performance like this that's listless, the offense isn't moving, penalties piling, everything, and things I'm not thinking of, well, now you're going to hear the boo birds. Now you're doing, it's one thing to do this away from home for the last month. Now you're going to do it in your hometown. Not that John Wildhack isn't going to get the feedback one way or the other, but to do it in the dome for those that are there, if they falter again, that has much more of an impact here. And I think that could be a very substantial game for a lot of things, including uh, Dino's status as head coach, which was a popular topic, Emily, to uh, transition to the voicemail line. I was afraid that people calling the voicemail line were going to get that message. You know, the voice box is full because we got a lot tonight. And we're glad that you guys uh, took advantage of that at 315-552-1964. That is our voicemail line. And uh, let us jump in here because uh, you guys were certainly fired up about this game, this program, all things considered. And we'll start with a, a nice Easy, quick one here, Emily. What an embarrassment. That sums it up that's right it? there. That's it. Yeah. that's Somebody called just to say that. I love it. Ooh. That's what we're here for, right? Yeah. That's what we're here for. Just that's call what most of my Twitter bit. mentions looked like. Every time I tweeted something, it felt like I got one response that was exactly that. So. An, an audio Twitter message right there. Yeah. Uh, this, this voicemail comes from somebody that was there with you in Blacksburg. Hi, Brent. I uh, traveled down to Virginia Tech to watch the game, and I, I just can't defend Edo anymore. I'm I'm so done. I he needs to go. Uh, I don't know how you feel, but he needs to go. It's over. I'm sick of paying season tickets every year to just watch not even mediocre football at this point. So let me. I can't wait to watch what you think, but he needs to go. Bye. I think we're getting to that point where that is an inescapable conversation and it's becoming inevitable, right? But again, it's what should be done versus what will be done. And that's the question we're going to answer certainly over the next four weeks. But that Boston college game, I think is going to provide us a lot of, of, of answers on that. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to button. I'm going to say like, obviously like, like fan, Fan response to coaches does not have really any impact, I think, in whether they get fired or not. But it is certainly interesting to gauge how much the t- – like, it feels like people really jumped ship this week on on this whole situation. Like, like I'm saying, that's not going to impact the decision. That's not how college athletics works. Uh, <laughs> but it is, it is just interesting to watch and consider because it's like – like we said, there was three – losses before this that did not cause people to do that like in fact like after some of those losses like there were still very much people on board and were like no we'll get this back together i was getting texts through the past week being like you guys are going to need to apologize to dino like 
what he's going to get four more wins. Like it's going to be good. And I was like, we'll see. And now it's certainly we're seeing. I'm going to leave the weird window open. I remind people often on this show and, and off it that football is weird and weird yeah. stuff happens. Okay. So I will leave that window open, but the way it's looking right now, what I've seen and what you've seen and what everybody's seen, like it, this is indefendable and you can't seriously sell me that this would be the right coach to lead you forward through this. Like you've run out of time. You've run out of options. You've run out of, we, we've got the, 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 an eight year example of what you're going to do. And I just don't know how you continue to say, no, 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 no. Next year is going to be the year, but yeah. we'll see. There's four games left here. Uh, speaking of uh, Twitter and X and, and people uh, coming to us from there, Jeff identifies Jeff. himself as Jeff from Twitter. And he has this nice. to say. Brent, it's Jeff from Twitter. Listen, Syracuse has been outscored as of this moment. 142 to 27 over the last three and a half games. It's just after halftime of this debacle. At no point during the Greg Robinson era did they ever experience a four-game stretch this appallingly awful. That team had seasons of 1-10 and ten and 2-10 and, and still managed to be more competitive than this. Brent, I mean, I don't know what to say. They can eliminate 10,000 more seats next season if they want to. If they're not going to make the changes... They need to. This team is not advancing anymore. This team's not even plateaued anymore. They are going backwards. They are becoming less and less competitive with the teams they need to be able to play with in this conference. And it's just time for a change. I've already canceled my trip up for next week, and I don't even know if I'm going to make a trip up next season. This is just awful. So Jeff did a little research for us there, Emily, in saying that I'll have to go double-check this. No offense, Jeff, but we just we got to double check these things. The Greg Robinson era was pretty bad. So to say there wasn't a four game stretch in the Robinson era like this, or close to it, that shows you the territory we've entered here. And you know, he's basically Voldemort, Emily. Like he's he's the name we don't mention around here anymore. If you're cringing on that territory, that's that's tough. That, that's tough right. gig. And and his comment about the competitiveness is what we were saying after the Florida State game is is like no one had expected them to win that game, but everyone wanted them to look competitive in that game, and they didn't. And they should have looked competitive in this game. We were Our, our Syracuse.com group was split on, on winners. I took Syracuse by one point. Obviously, that did not pan out. Uh, <laughs> but, like, it's just, it's just the, the lack of looking competitive at all that I think makes That's all of this as bad as it is. That, and that matters. Yeah. That matters against those those teams that they lost to prior. It certainly matters in a game like this. And let me remind you and remind everybody, this has all happened on either ESPN or ABC. The whole country is National watching. TV. And now you got a fifth game next week on ESPN2, which is not a, a national brand as big as, say, ESPN or ABC. But it's not the CW, which Dabo Swinney can't find, or it's not ESPN+, Plus, or it's not some game, you know, off the radar here. People are going to groan now when Syracuse is yeah. on their screen. Keith Bullock said it after the Florida State game, like, get Syracuse off my television. And it's what you said, Emily. They're not even competitive. Nobody yeah. wants to watch a game where a team is just out there, you know, flopping around like a fish out of water for four quarters. Yeah. To Boston we go for our next voicemail. Syracuse's yeah. next opponent, of course, Boston College. Hey, Brent. Ryan in Boston here. You know, I'm at halftime, and I don't even know if I can call myself upset right now. Uh, this is just what I expect. You know, unless something drastically changes in the school's philosophy and the, in the athletic leadership philosophy, you know, I mean, this is just what Syracuse football has given to me and set as the expectation. You know, the wheels have come off. I don't know if I expect another ACC win this, you know, this season. And that might be a little harsh, but – Still, I, I don't expect them to be going through and, and, and beating tough opponents. Like, sure, we'll pick up a couple of good wins and, and, and good by but good large score differential. I don't mean good by over good teams. We play bad teams. You get a couple, you know, morale boosting wins at the beginning of the season against some trash, and, and then here we are left facing some sort of semblance of competition, and we're just getting absolutely smoked. You know, it really leads me to think, like, do we even – Stay in the ACC with all this conference realignment stuff. I, I know that's where the money's at, and, and I know that 
you know, where we should be uh, financially. But, I mean, from a competitive standpoint, it's, it's just, it doesn't even make sense to me why we're trying to feel a team here. You know, I, I think we really need a serious, serious change as it comes to us. Uh, coaches, when it comes to athletic directors, when it comes to senior leadership, either in their mentality or in personnel. Uh, it, they just haven't given me any reason to think we're going to be anything besides that. Anyway, sorry for the rant there. Just had to throw it out there after that miserable first half. Have a good night. Don't be sorry, Ryan. That's what we're here for, to, to vent about that. And see, Emily, this is what we're, we're coming down to. If this pattern continues, no one's going to care about the here and now and who, you, you know, they're going to forget who you're even playing. They're just thinking yeah. about who's the coach, what are we doing here, why are we in the ACC? Like, the macro just becomes the dominant part of the conversation. And having been through a few of these coaching changes here, Emily, this mm -hmm. I'm getting deja vu right now. People yeah. just reach a certain point where, like, I don't care – I'm done. I've I've made my decision. I'm over it. I want to change, and I don't care what they do. I don't care who they play. I'm not even watching anymore. Tell you know, wake me when something's different. And a lot of people are getting to that point, as as you can hear and, and you can see. Yeah. It's Let's just, keep it it's going, just, shall no. we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you and I are just like, yeah, that's <laughs> just you and I have to do another. The, <laughs> we have to do the game by game because and that's what we're here to do. We want to keep you informed. And a lot of people are like, hey, Brent, you could just change the channel to the Bills game tonight. I'm like, actually, no, I can't. I can't. <laughs> this, is, this, this is work, but at least the Bills won. I'll say I know. That. I'm, here do, I'm here doing this, and a new Taylor Swift album just dropped. Oh, oh you're you're a half hour behind on that as we no. speak. I, I know what you'll be listening to on the way back. <laughs> All right, a few more voicemails here. Uh, let's go next to... Dan in Rochester, who had a great uh, Metallica reference here. Hey, Brent. This is Dan from Rochester. The Hokies have Enter Sandman. Apparently, the Qs have a different Metallica song, Hardwired to Self-Destruct. I love the music puns. I didn't even plan that. We went from Taylor Swift to Metallica. Emily... Think about this for a minute while I play another voicemail or two. Is there a Taylor Swift song that applies to this situation for Syracuse? Mm, while okay. you think about that, let's okay. hear from our guy, Steve in Oklahoma. Hey, Brent, it's Steve from Oklahoma. It's just unbelievable the way they're playing this first half. It's time to get rid of this 3 3 5. I've waited and waited and waited. And any team that's worth their salt just runs over us. It's not working. The kids aren't ready to play. It's time for Dino to go because they're not going to beat anybody the rest of the season if they continue to play like they're playing. It's just an embarrassment on national television four weeks in a row. I just hate it. Have a good evening. Okay, that's our friend Steve, who's called us uh, a few times on the post-game show here. I don't know why this song popped in my head all too well. Mm. I, like, I've known this story all too well for yes. Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Does that that's fit? A good one. It's okay. a good pick. I'm not a big um, Taylor guy, but that, that song popped in my head. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I'm i going to go, this is why we can't have nice things. Oh. Reputation era, which is all about, well exactly what the title says is why we can't have nice things and Syracuse can't have a 4 and 0 start because it just ends up being a 6 and 6 season anyway or a 5 and 7 season anyway so which look that's what Syracuse has to do i've i've gone back and forth with this for a number of years but if i'm looking at it from a standpoint of all right it's bowl game is is the standard then of course i'm going to lighten up my non-conference slate as much as i can and hold on for dear life in league play. Well, they're 0-4 in league play, and they can't finish higher than 500 in league play. So that's a pattern. Same thing last year. They start 6-0, and and everything falls apart in the second half of the season, and we're seeing a repeat of that, maybe not a direct comparison, but the one thing that kind of connects the two, Emily, is it all started after the Clemson game in both situations, right? That yeah. The free fall that this team went in both times happened against Clemson. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple more voicemails. We've been all over the map, and uh, now we go down to Long Island. Let's take a listen. Okay, this message is for Brent and Emily, to EC from Long Island. Uh, just sick of watching this team. It is not about wins and losses. It's 
about the lack of discipline, lack of preparedness, lack of competitiveness, lack of competence. Uh, you can't blame this stuff on injuries, NIL, transfer portal. It all comes back to Dino, and it's just, uh, it really is pathetic as a long time. Uh, emotional and financial supporter of the program. I just can't justify continuing that support of a Dino Babers led program. Uh, I hope Wild Hack sees this and hears this loud and clear, uh, because we do not have momentum. And that's been a theme that you and I have been talking about here. Like, yep. this is important semantics, image, momentum ascendant brands all these things like you got to back that stuff up and we just haven't seen it yeah and i believe emily yes we do have one more he's become i love all you guys that call but this is my guy rock and ron oh rock and ron is he rock and florida? ron down in florida let, let's go down south hey brett uh, this is rock and ron down in florida i'm telling you I thought I would could wait till the second half to give you a call. I just can't take it anymore. This, this, it keeps going on. We have, there is no discipline here. There is, uh, no stability. Uh, Schrader looks like he's so timid throwing the ball. Uh, the play calling is just atrocious. And the defense, if they're missing tackles, God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do, my friend? Let me know. I, I'm trying to keep hopes here. Have a good one, man. That's my guy, like Rock a, and Ron. He was a desperate plea at the end. There, you could hear you could hear the pain in that man's you voice. You can, but you can also like he's he's still smiling and he's still positive through it, and he's still Rock and yeah. Ron. And he's and he's like laughing, but he's like, "Help me, please help me. We need we, yeah. we have answers. I wish I had the answers. I thought Emily they would find some of those answers after the bye week. You wrote about this." Huge meeting that they had. The whole team watches the Florida State film, which was different, right? Mm -hmm. So they tried to rock the boat that way. Like, so you played that card already. You're going to do that again for this game? Like, there's only so many motivational ploys you can do. Like, you just got to play better football. And I wish I had the answers for that. Like, the offense isn't functional, and the defense just has too much pressure on them and has fallen apart. Uh, special teams is, isn't exactly... They're not even a position for special teams to break out and help. Trevor Pena is, is still not healthy. Like, I, Ron, I'm looking for it. I just, I, yeah. I, have you looked under all the rocks, Emily? Because I don't know where the answers are either. Yeah. Well, and like I said, like, it, like, no one seems to have answers. Like, even the people on the team, like, you ask them about, like, what's going wrong. And, like, the one thing they keep on falling back on or, or the players have kept on falling back on, especially is like, Oh, well, it, there's always just like, it's like one man does something wrong and then it affects the whole thing. And sure that I can kind of maybe on some plays, I think that makes sense, but there is no I in team. It is not one person who is consistently making, and they're, and they're not saying this in like, there's one person who should be replaced. It's like one person, every different play and Schrader will be like, oh, yeah, it's me some plays, it's a receiver some plays, it's an offensive lineman missing a block. But it's like, okay, how do you fix that? Feels like That's one of the that most unfixable problems on this yeah. team is the offensive line. Well, I mean, yeah. That's, we could talk forever about that. We could do a whole show about that. We, we'll certainly <laughs> be writing about that and talking about it into the next week against Boston College. That is a major issue. And again, I know that story all too well. I've heard that many times and seen that, unfortunately, many times, not only in the Dino Bear, Babers era, but just in general. That has been a, a major issue for Syracuse football. Well, thank you for all your voicemails, guys. Uh, 315-552-1964 is the voicemail line, and, and you can leave a, a, a voicemail anytime. I was uh, struck by how many came at halftime and said, okay, I'm out of here, but I got to leave this uh, this vent before I go. to let you know, yeah. Emily, any last thoughts before we uh, send you off to take in the new Taylor Swift uh, version of, I believe, 1989 is the latest one she put out, right? Yeah, I don't know if I'll actually listen to it tonight or save it for the plane. I got work to do still. I do not, for everyone listening, I do not get to go to bed when I get off of this. <laughs> like, there's still work to be done. That is right. So That is right. Lots of caffeine. 
Yeah. For Emily. Lots of caffeine. Well, Emily, great stuff. Thank you for your insight uh, from Blacksburg. Thanks for uh, adjusting there. Had some uh, workers up in the press box that uh, wanted to get out of there before yeah. uh, before we had to do this show, and we're fixing some things up. So thanks for pivoting out to a different place there. Thanks to everybody that watched tonight. All your great comments. Uh, just a reminder that we do this live after every Syracuse football game, but it is available to you on podcast form on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, Amazon, make sure you subscribe and follow us there so you can get the post-game show and Syracuse Sports uh, on demand whenever you would like to listen. It's uh, currently 12.51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you prefer a more reasonable time to watch and listen to the show, I don't blame you. So that's why the podcast is there for you as well. It's been all presented by our friends at Krause Health, the official health care provider of SU Athletics. We'll talk to you next time, guys.